Vim is one of the most used applications on Linux, and the vast majority of people know at least enough to open up Vim, do their edits, and get out of Vim. But there's so much more to Vim than just, you know, that bare minimum. There's so much more you can do. And you, you've probably seen YouTube videos where Vim experts have gone through and just done amazing things with Vim and doing edits in huge documents and substituting things and using macros and all this high-end wizardry. And like, wow, I want to be able to do that. And I'm one of those guys. I want to be able to do that too. But I look at where I am now with them compared to where I was like where I was like a year ago, and it's night and day. So I think Vim is very much one of those programs where over time you learn more and more, and you you just kind of look back and realize, well, I really know quite a bit about Vim, even if I'm still not one of those people who can do all that magic in terms of editing and stuff. So what I'm going to do today is give you 50 tips and tricks give or take a few. I've counted them a couple times, but it turns out I can't count that high. But <laughs> I'm pretty sure there are around 50 tips or tricks that will help you be a better Vim user. This is going to be quite a video, and I'm going to go through them fairly quickly. So let's go ahead and jump in. But before I do, hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. I really do appreciate it. Everybody who's already subscribed to the channel, I appreciate everybody. We've just gone over 4,200 subscribers and you're all awesome so be awesome and hit the red subscribe button if you want to see more content like this so now let's go ahead and jump in i'm really really bad at those call outs that's why i don't do them very often but uh, now <laughs> matt the video is going to be like three hours long if you don't stop you know doing this all right anyways So the first one that I want to show you is something that happens outside of them. There are many ways to open up a document. There's the traditional way of them document name or whatever. But let's say you wanted to open up a document to a certain line number. Let's say for whatever reason you're constantly making changes to the same file and you know which line number you have to change. It's easy to open up them to that line number. So if I do this, do nvim config. Th these are my DWM configs, by the way. And you'll notice that I can't actually type today. I can do this and then do plus, say, line 34. So this is this should open up my config.def.h file to line 34. Now, it's possible that this doesn't work for me because if you have a setting in your Vim config file that asks Vim to remember the position of the document after it's closed so that when you come back, it opens up at the same spot. What this will actually do is it will take that spot it was saved and add 34 lines to it. So uh, that sometimes happens to me. This will only work for me if I'm at the top of the document when I've closed it the last time. I'm pretty sure I did that. So this should work. And in this case, it didn't work. I was apparently at the bottom of the, the line. So that's the reason why it didn't work for me. But for you, as long as you don't have that particular setting that I happen to have, this will actually should open up the file to line 34. It seems to be a little bit finicky with some settings that you have in the VimRC file. I should also note that I'm using NVim. These tips or tricks should work just fine whether you're using vanilla Vim or NeoVim. So the next one I want to talk about is cursor positioning. So let's just say I want to... I'm looking at the screen, and I want to change the position of the cursor. I can actually go through and change the line number if I want to by going to this thing, or I can do uh, uh, something else like 10J. I can jump 10 lines if I wanted to. But let's just say I wanted to move the position of the cursor on the screen. I don't necessarily want to go to the top of the document, but I want to go to the top of the screen. I can do that by hitting capital H, and that will take me to the top of the screen. Uh, if I wanted to say, say I'm at the top of the screen and I wanted to go to the middle of the screen, I can hit capital M and that will take me to the middle of the screen. So the next one I want to talk about is the letter D. And the letter D does a ton of different stuff. Let me actually turn on screen key here. So like I was saying, the letter D just does a ton of stuff. And as you can expect, D pretty much stands for delete. So if you're at the beginning of a line here, and you want to delete the whole line, DD will delete the whole line. And that works for the same way you can do for a ton of other stuff. So you don't have to be at the beginning of the line. You can be in the middle of the line if you want. Let's just say we're down here, and we want to do DD here. That deletes the whole line. It probably happened quicker than you can see, but it deleted the whole line. 
Now, let's just say you want to just delete this word. DW deletes the word, but it will only work if you're at the beginning of the word. So if I'm at the, in the middle, it will delete from the cursor to the right. It won't delete the whole word. So DW for, for delete word will only go through and delete the whole word if you're at the beginning of the word. Otherwise, it deletes from the cursor all the way to the end. Okay, DL will stand for delete letter. This will delete the cur so whatever letter the cursor is on. If you hit DL, it'll just delete that letter. Okay. So that's the letter D. There are a few other things you can do with D as well. If you want to do, say you want, let's just say I want to delete three lines. So I could do three DD and it will delete three lines. I could do five DD, five DD. Oops. I can, I have to actually, you know, do this right. Five DD and I'll delete five lines. Now I can also do the same thing with words. So I can do five DW and I'll delete five words. So that's really cool and really powerful. If you want to go through and you're editing stuff and you want to, you know, do things really fast. Uh, similarly, C is also very important. So let's just say I want to change this word here, const, underneath the cursor. I could hit and in, get into the in, insert mode and, you know, delete it like that, like a, you know, a, a complete noob, or I can just do change word and it will delete the word and go and put me into insert mode. And then I can change the new word to whatever, you know, if I wanted to do that. So, that's change word. The other things for that work with delete will also work with change. So if I wanted to change this letter, I could do CL. That will delete that letter and get me into insert mode. So I can just change that one letter. I can go through and do five change word and it'll delete five words and put me to insert mode. Uh, so I can do that as well. Uh, another really cool thing I have some stuff here in parentheses. So I have ST here in parentheses. If I wanted to change the stuff inside the parentheses, the words inside the parentheses, I can do change inside parentheses and it'll delete everything inside the parentheses. Uh, this also works with, so if I undo this and I can do, if I go back to the beginning here, here I can do change inside curly brackets, or braces or whatever the hell you call them. It'll delete every, everything inside the curly brackets. Uh, and that's really, really useful. That means you don't have to go through and, you know, delete everything manually. So we'll just go through and undo that. Now, I will cover undo here in a while, but just needless to say, use undo. Okay, so that is the letter C. And like I said, change inside of stuff will pretty much work with anything. It will work with single quotes, quotes, parentheses, brackets, square braces, all that stuff change inside and then press that key and you will be able to change inside those things. Now, I do believe if I'm in the center here and I do change inside scrolly brackets, actually that does work. I thought maybe it just did from the cursor, but it actually does work just fine. Okay. Uh, we're just getting started, so strap in. The, the next thing I want to talk about is quitting and saving your documents. So everybody knows colon WQ and colon Q. That's the way VimTutor teaches you how to do it. And there's nothing wrong with using Vim, the VimTutor way. It's perfectly legitimate. To this day, I still use that very often. However, there is another way to do it. So let's say I want to get out of this document. I don't really want to save it just in case some of those changes I made earlier, you know, mess things up. So I can do capital Z, capital Q, and that will quit the document without saving. it. Now, if I go back into this and I want to save it now, I can do capital Z, Z, and that will save and exit. So that is a really cool way of just getting out of a document, whether you want to save it or not. Uh, and it's easier, at least one stroke easier than doing the colon WQ thing. Okay, the next one that I want to talk about is going to a specific line number. So in this document here, I have 195 lines. And say I wanted to go to line 100. I can do that by doing colon 100 and hit enter. That'll take me to the 100th line. So that's really easy. You can also jump a set number of lines by hitting uh, something sp specific. So let's say I wanted to jump 10 lines. I can do 10 J and that'll take me down 10 lines. Let's say I wanted to go up five lines. So I can do five K and that'll take me up five lines. Just on the same note, this will also work in visual mode. So if you're in visual mode, so let's just say you're in this visual mode here and you want to jump down 10 lines, you could do 10 J and that'll highlight 10 lines. So you can use it in visual mode as well. 
So the next one really only applies for your VimRC. Now, this is part of my NVim configuration file. It will look a little bit different than what your uh, VimRC will look like, but it's basically the same stuff. It's the same syntax. But if, let's say I wanted to know what the word IMAP means in terms of Vim. Uh, I pretty much know what that means. I'm mapping something for insert mode. But let's say I didn't know that. If I hit capital K, that will bring up the help page or the man page for Vim, and it will give me a little bit of information about what that means. And you can do this for any key binding inside Vim. It'll take you to the documentation for that specific command inside Vim. So that's really cool. Everyone knows that I is insert mode. If you Even if you just know the basics of Vim, I is always insert mode. But insert mode with the lowercase i works in a certain way. So if you hit I and you have the cursor here on the O in, in, in this particular document, I hit I, it's going to put the insert mode before the O, before where the cursor just was. It's always going to do that. It's always going to work that way. Now, let's say I wanted to put it after the O. So if you just use I all the time, like I seem to always constantly do, I'd have to go into insert mode and then move the cursor, you know, manually, like a, like a, a, a Neanderthal. What you can do instead is use lowercase a, and that will take your cursor and put it after the cursor where the cursor was just a moment ago. So that means you can just continue on from there. The capital versions of those letters do two different things. So capital I will put you into insert mode at the beginning of the line you're on. And capital A will put you into insert mode at the end of the line you're on. So now let's go ahead through and talk about pasting and copying. Now, copying and pasting in Vim is a little bit weird because it doesn't copy the stuff that you copy to your system clipboard unless you have it set up to do so. I do have it set up to do so, but not everybody does. And I believe by default, it doesn't work that way. So when I'm talking about copying, pasting, or in this case, yanking and pasting, I'm really talking about words and stuff inside of Vim only. It's not going to take that stuff and put it into a general system-wide clipboard for you to use. Uh, I just wanted to put that out there. So let's say I wanted to to yank this line, and by yank, I mean copy. So if I just hit YY, I've now copied that line, and if I hit P, I've now pasted that line, exactly what was in the, the copy buffer. So we can see this probably more explicitly if I do something that has something with some space around it. So if I yank this line here, and go into insert mode and then paste this, we can see now that's how it's pasted. So I, I did YY and it yanked the line, and I did P and it pasted the line. So if we do DD, that will delete those extra lines. Okay, so that is YY. Now, similar to D and C, yank will also do things with words and letters. So if I just wanted to yank this word, I could do YW, and that will just yank that word. If I just wanted to do just that letter, I could do YL and then do P, and it just did that letter. So that's how yanking works, and that's how pasting works. The next one is a little bit more convoluted in expert mode. Uh, we'll probably go back to some of the more beginner stuff later on, but this stuff isn't really all that organized. I probably should have organized it a little bit better, but uh, this next one is, like I said, a little bit more expert mode. Let's say I wanted to replace the word static with something different throughout the entire document. I can do that easily. So I do colon percent sign s and basically what this tells vim is we're going to be doing a substitution. Okay? And then we give it the word that we want to substitute. So in this case we want to do static. And you can see I have it set up so it actually highlights static as I went along. So then I do another slash and I give it the word that I want to replace it with. So let's, whatever. <laughs> okay, and then I do another slash and I do G. Now G tell, if if I just did it without the G, that would just replace the line that I'm on. Okay, if I do G, it will do it for the whole document. So if we do, if we go back up here, why I jump to the, to the bottom, uh, by default it just does that. Uh, you can see every word that was static now says whatever. And we can just hit U to undo that because obviously DWM is not going to build like that. But that's how you do a global search and replace in Vim. It's really quite easy. And it's not something you'll probably remember. You'll probably have to look it up if you're like me every single time. But 
uh, once you've done it a few times, it, it should kind of get you in there. So uh, the next one is a tip for editing your VimRC file. So let's just say I'm going to go to my NVim file. So I'm going to cd into dot config NVim and then uh, general. And then I vim into general dot vim. Okay. And then we go back to the top here. And let's just say I've gone through and made a whole bunch of edits to my vim RC file. I've changed colors. I've added some key bindings or whatever. Now, if you're going to do this manually, in order to get those changes to take effect, you have to save your current buffer or your, your current file and re-enter it, you know, like manually. However, if you have it set up a certain way, you can go through and do colon source. In my case, I'd be do, doing init.vim, which is my main NeoVim config file. Uh, but for most people, you, what you want to do is do colon slash dot vim rc. Now, I would have to give the full full length, the full path to my init.vim, uh, but that was just an example. You run that, if I do dot config uh, nvim init.vim, I hit that, and what that's going to do is reload live your vimrc file so that the changes you've made take effect without actually you having to go through and close it. Now, the cool thing about this is that you can go through and set up a key binding. So if I go through and into my key bindings uh, folder here and then vim into key bindings I have a key binding for exactly this so what this does is allows me to hit leader s so in my case the leader key is the space key so I can do space s and that will go through and do the exact same thing I had to type out with so if you go through and are editing your vimrc a lot put this in your key bindings and that will allow you to go through and source your vimrc file without having to close it all the time uh, just remember you're going to have to change this path so if you're using regular vim it's probably just going to be uh, vimrc instead of uh, what i have here now i have a plugin called nerd tree which allows me to open up a file manager that looks like this and it's really cool uh, but you don't need that let's just say you don't want to have to add a whole bunch of extra plugins you can actually use Vim's built-in file manager by going colon, capital E, small x. And that will actually go through and enter into a file picker for you. So you can actually, we can go up a le level here and go to, say, uh, general again, and then general.vim, and that will open up. And that's how you can navigate through your file structure without closing Vim, doing CD, and all that kind of stuff. You can just do it from a built-in file manager right inside Vim. The next thing I should teach you is how to open up a file from within Vim. So let's say you've been editing this and you want to open up a different file. You can do colon E, small case E, and then the path to the file you want to open. And this can be a relative path, so if you're in the same directory, you can just type in whatever file you're in. But if you're not in that, you'll have to give an, ex an absolute path. So if in this case, we'll do dot config, uh, nvim, init.vim. And that will go through and that will open up in it.vim from where we were. Okay, so the next one I want to talk about is one that is going to be life-changing for you, probably, if you don't know it. And that is, let's just say you you have a structure like mine and you're using NeoVim or even Vim because Vim will allow you to create a VimRC like this as well. Uh, and your stuff is all over the place. It's in separate files and directories and all that kind of stuff. And you don't want to have to go to a file manager, but you have the path right in front of you. Uh, for example, right here, I have this path. If I wanted to go to this path normally, I'd either have to open up the net tree or nerd tree. I'd have to open up the EX file manager that I was doing, or I'd have to close Vim and get there manually through the command line. Or I can just hit this key binding, GF, and that will take you to the file that you were highlighting. So that is GF, and it's really, really cool. I use it all the time. It's so good. Now, let's say you have want to switch two characters around. This one's a really easy one. Let's say I'm making a comment here, and I've mixed these two characters up. So in C++, the comments are always slash, star, and then star, slash. But I mix these things up all the time, so I might have done star, slash, and then, you know, did the comment and then did, you know, slash star. And 
it's wrong because they're mixed up. So if I'm back here in normal mode, if I wanted to get these right without actually having to e edit them, I can just do XP and it will actually switch them around. Now, it doesn't work perfectly in this case because it actually adds a space. Uh, actually, it didn't work at all. And I'm not sure. So if we do XP again, there we go. That It worked then. Okay, and then we can go here and do the same thing here. XP and it will change it to the proper place. So that's when you've made one minor mistake and you don't want it to go through and delete things and all that stuff, just use lowercase x, lowercase p, and it will switch those two characters around. Okay, so let's say you've been in a buffer for a while. Now, when I say buffer, I basically just mean you're in a file. It's more complicated than that. Basically, you can have multiple buffers open at the same time, which means you have multiple files open at the same time. That can be in a split, you can be in a tab, uh, whatever. So I use buffer and file basically interchangeably. They're not exactly the same thing, but just bear with me for that, you know, with that. But let's say you've been messing around in a file for a long time, and you kind of need to retrace your steps. Somewhere along the line, you've made a mistake in the last few steps, and you need to find that. Now, you could just scroll up uh, or scroll back down or wherever you've been. You could do that manually. Or you could hit control O. If you hit control O, that will jump you back and forth between where you've been over a certain point. Now that will take you backwards in your history. If you do control I, that'll take you forward in your history. And that's really cool. So if you've made a mistake a, a few minutes beforehand, and you kind of remember where you were, but not really. You can just hit those key, one of the, those key bindings, and it will take you backwards to where you've been in the document using your history. Okay. At this point in the video, which has been going on for a long time, we're uh, not even halfway through. Uh, I probably should not have made this 50. I probably should have done 25, but we're committed now, folks. Let's just keep going. We're going to keep chugging along. At this point, we're going to get into some really cool stuff. So, if you thought the stuff at the beginning of this was kind of basic, but you kind of toughed it out and you're still with the video, I thank you. You are about to be rewarded, because there's some good stuff coming. So, let's say you want to put the output of a command into your document, without having to go to the command line and copy and paste and whatever. Let's just say you want to do that. So, let's go ahead and, so let's go ahead and open up a new document here. Let's just say I wanted to go through and paste in the output of my ZSHRC file. I could do that really easily by doing this. So from normal mode, what you want to do is do R, oops, excuse me. You have to do colon R and then do exclamation point and then the command that you want to do. And in this case, I want to use the cat command. And then I want to do the path to the file. So in this case, my zsh file is in .config zsh .zshrc. Okay, and then if I hit enter, what you're going to see is it's going to output the. It's going to get, going to give me the output of the cat command of zshrc. And basically, what cat does is it just reads that file and gives me the output of that file and. In this case, it pasted it directly into my brand new file that I just created. And you can do this with anything. You can do colon r exclamation point ls. And this will give me the output of ls from the directory that I'm in outside of Vim. In this case, I'm in one of my nvim configuration files, I think. So if I go through, oh, I'm in my dwm uh, file. So this gives me the L output of ls from that certain directory. So that is really cool if you want to go through and edit uh, or add the output of any command. It works with uh, ls, it works with cat, grep, awk, all that kind of stuff. And it will take the output of those commands and put it into your file. So there are a few cool things you can do with double exclamation points. So from normal mode, if you hit double exclamation points like this, you'll see down here at the bottom, it actually changes it to uh, colon, period, exclamation point. Don't worry about that. You can always get to this by doing double bang bang, as, as, as we say. It's double exclamation point. And there are a few things you can do with this. So the first thing, if you do bang bang and then type in the word date, what that will do is it will paste in the current date and time. That's really cool. Uh, you can also go through and 
run the current line in the shell. So let's just say we have a, a command here. So in this case, we're going to do ls tilde slash dot config uh, slash zsh. Let's say I wanted to run that command. Now, for whatever reason, you have this in a script or whatever. Maybe you have a CD or you have a, a whatever command you're in that you have inside of a script, and you want to run this without actually having to go through and run the whole script to see if it works, or maybe you just want to see what the output of it is, you can actually run the whole thing, the current line, by doing bang bang, and then sh, and then enter. And basically what that will do is it will, go, will give you the output of that particular command, and just replaces that command with the output. So in order to get everything that was in that file, I'd have to do this, and then, then I can do bang, 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 uh, sh, and then enter, and then it will give me everything that was in that directory. It will run that exact command, and it, can, it will work with anything. So let's say you have a list of something. So you have, uh, let's just say you have a list of numbers, and you want to sort them. Uh, in this case, they're pretty much already sorted, but let's go ahead and, and make let's 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 make a mess so that they're, they're not sorted. Okay, let's say I want to sort these things. I can do that by selecting them in visual mode. So just hit V and then go down so that they're all selected, and then I can go through and do exclamation point sort, and that will sort them A to Z, or you know ascending order. I believe is maybe that's descending order. I can never remember. Uh, I, I always get all that stuff backwards uh, <laughs> it, it always happens anyways uh so if that's that's one way to sort you can do the whole document that way if you have them you know numbered or whatever or if you just have a certain amount of paragraphs that you want ordered by a to z you can do that let's say you're in a file and you want to rename it uh, it no longer pleases you that this file is named text.txt i can go through and change that by going doing colon save and then the new name of the file so, in this case, I want to name it mat.txt. And I can actually go through and show you that this worked by doing an ls here, and I now have a mat.txt here. Now, it, it actually just copies it to this. It doesn't move it. It says text.txt is actually still there. That's not exactly how I expected that to work, but it basically the same thing. Uh, it's weird that it does work that way. Uh, but at least you've renamed it. Let's say we're in mat.txt. And we want to open up text.txt in a split. We can do that in two different ways. Now, split does exactly what it says it's going to do. It's going to split the screen into two different buffers. So in this case, we can do sp text.txt. Txt, and that will actually give us a split. I, I didn't open. I didn't type the name right, but it will give us a split of whatever file we opened up. And we can just quit that by doing. Uh, capital ZQ, or we could, could have wrote it as well if we wanted to by capital ZZ. Uh, and we'll do this again with, with the actual name, text.txt, and we can now see that it opened it up in a, this is a horizontal split. Now, let's say that's not pleasing for me. I want to do it in a vertical split, so they're side by side instead. I can do colon VS for vertical split, and then text.txt as well, and that puts them side by side. Now, the problem here comes in is there's a very weird default ways of switching between these. I don't know what it is. It's something about control W and then the Vim keys. I believe that's what it is. Uh, I have it set up so I can just do control, do control roll H and control J control H and control L will actually switch between them sometimes. Uh, anyways, that did work. If you see the cursor up there, it moved back and forth. Okay. Uh, but that you have to have that specifically set up in order for that to work. So that's, those are splits. Okay. We're in the 30s. We've made it through the 30s. So let's say we wanted to... Let's go ahead and close one of these splits here. And let's say we wanted to move mat.txt to a different uh, directory. We can do that by doing... Okay, so I can do colon w, and then the path to the document. So in this case, I'm going to do colon slash mat.txt. Then we can go to do that. And now if we get out of this and go to our home directory and do an ls, mat.txt should be here somewhere, which it is right here. So so that is renaming or moving a directory to a different directory. Uh, moving a file to a different directory, I should say. Okay. The next one is 
a little bit about the global command. So let's go ahead and vim into our mat.txt file there. And we have all this stuff here. Let's say I want to uh, list all the contents with the word uh, that. So if I wanted to do that, I do colon G for global and then type the word that and then do slash and it'll actually go through and find all the lines that contain that and then highlight them. Uh, that's not really all that powerful, but what's great about this is if you wanted to do any lines that create that and uh, input. So we at least know there's one line that has the words that and input in it. We can do that and then backslash and then pipe and then do input and then do forward slash and that will actually go through and highlight all the lines that have that one and there's only one actually oh, there is only that one line uh, but you can see if you wanted to find all the the iterations of the line that have certain things in them so uh, all of the lines are of a variable of a certain name for example you could use a uh, the global command in order to search for those if you wanted to so this is global search in, in this instance uh, you can also go through and do this convoluted thing that I'm going to about to show you now. Uh, I can't tell you how or why this works. Just I'm going to put this out there. Uh, I have no clue. Uh, I I don't know very many people who can actually tell you how or why this works. So we're going to use the global command again. We're going to do a slash, and then we're going to do a caret, and then we're going to do a backslash, and then s, and then a glob, which is an asterisk, uh, and then the dollar sign. And then we're going to do slash D. Now what this does is it removes all blank lines. So if we do this, it will take out every single blank line from the document and just delete them. So if I had to guess, it's what it's going to do is searching for all those blank lines. And then that D at the end is deleting them. So, okay. So let's say we've done a search here for config. So we know config uh, exists several times. We've gone through and we've done some searching. And we want to get rid of these highlights. These highlights don't go away ever unless you tell them to go away. So in order to tell them to go away, you do colon, N-O-H, and enter, and they'll go away. You can also uh, map this in your vimrc file uh, or your keybindings rc file if you want to do that as well. So as you as you saw, uh, searching is done through the slash. You can do slash config again, and that will do the slash, and you hit enter, and then you can navigate through these forward with the N key, lowercase n, and you can go backwards with the capital N. Let's just say, though, you wanted to search for two words. So in this case, we want to search for export and path. So in this case, we can do slash export, and then the forward slash, or maybe this is the black backslash. Yeah, this is the backslash. And then the plus symbol, and then path, if you can spell. And this only actually appears twice, so we can do next and next and next and next. That's how you search for things that have a space in between them. All right, let's say you don't want to actually go have to go through and type in the search term you want to do. So first, let's clear this other search, N-O-H, okay? And let's just say we want to search for the word path, okay? We can do that by hitting the star key, so the asterisk key. And that will just search for path throughout the entire document. And you can go backwards with that same search by using the pound sign. And that will take you backwards in the document. So if we clear, and we're using NOH, and then we search for the word user, we can actually do the pound sign, and that will take us backwards. It only has one instance in this case anyways. So uh, if you had a whole bunch of those, it would actually take you the other direction for that search term. We're in the 40s. We're in the 40s. We've only got 10 more to go. Okay, so let's just say we've gone through and made some edits here. So there, let's say we wanted, at the end of every one of these, we wanted to do .txt. Let's just say we wanted to do that. So if we go down here and hit the period key, it'll do the same thing. Now, it's not great because we use the little, little lowercase i. So if we go here and hit lowercase a and dot, dot .txt, and then we go down here and do the period again, it will do it better. So we can go through and do this. Cool, huh? So it, all that does is the period just redoes the last command on the line that you were on. Uh, so 
That's just period. That's all it does. So let's just say you're a programmer, you're doing some scripting, and you have some parentheses here. And let's put some stuff in the parentheses. And then uh, let's see, we also have a couple curly brackets here, and we have some more stuff, and we have a, some braces here, and stuff like that. Now let's say we're back in normal mode, and we're at the beginning of the line, and we want to jump to the corresponding bracket, close parenthesis. We can do that by using the percent sign. So if we hit percent sign, it'll jump the cursor to the corresponding closed parenthesis or bracket. So if we're uh, on uh, this, uh, if, if I can actually get, uh, let's say I'm on this curly bracket here and I wanted to jump to the other one, just hit percent sign, it will jump us to that other curly bracket. The next one is really easy. I've been using it all throughout the video is undo. So if I wanted to undo some of the stuff to hit U and that will undo a whole bunch of stuff. If I wanted to redo that stuff, control R redoes all that stuff. Moving right along. So, okay. So let's say we're going to make this a bash script. After all this stuff, this is the ugliest looking bash script I've ever seen. There's not a single command in here that would actually run for bash. Well, actually that's not true. There is an if statement here that would actually work. I forgot that I had the ZSHRC in here, so that would actually work in Bash. So let's just say I wanted to put a shebang in here. So if I wanted to go through and do that, I could do colon, let's see, hash mark, bang, slash, bin, slash, bash. But I don't want to type that all out. I can actually go through and have them auto-complete that for me. So from insert mode, hit control N, and then we'll actually go through and try to auto-complete it for you so you can use Bash. So that's really cool. Now, it doesn't work all the time, and it'll only work with certain things, and sometimes it gets a little bit iffy on whether or not you're in a certain directory or whatever, but for the most part, it will actually autocomplete stuff. So if you type, if you're here at slash bi, you can go through and do control n again, and it'll actually completely autocomplete that for you. There's no other option. So if we do slash and then again, it's not going to do anything because it needs a little bit to work with. So if we do just BA again and do control N, it will actually go through and do that again. Um, so that's auto completion without, without a plugin. So a lot of people install a plugin in order to get that kind of functionality. Vim has that stuff built in. Uh, it's just not as good as some of the plugins. So anyways, that's really cool. Okay, so the next one is a little bit about visual mode. So there's two or three here. So if you do... Uh, some lowercase v, oops, we gotta get actually get back into into normal mode. If you do regular v, this does this letter by letter. As you can see, I'm just highlighting this letter by letter, then I can go through and yank it, I can delete it using the D key, and do whatever I want to do letter by letter. If I hit capital V, this selects it line by line. Now, it looks exactly the same, but as, you, as we get to lines that are longer, you can see this is selecting it line by line. Now, there is another visual mode that is really cool. So let's just say I wanted to delete the first lines of the next 10 lines here, but I don't want to delete anything but that first letter. So if I hit Control V, that will actually allow me to select this by columns. So I can go through and delete, let's say I wanted to delete all these things. You know, I could do that. So that is uh, one that, that Control V selects by paragraph, and it works well when you want to delete the first few uh, columns of a line. So say, for example, or the last few columns of a line, if they're all in line with each other, you can go through and delete all the extensions of something for, you know, it would kind of, the it would kind of work where up here where we added a whole bunch of .txt. So if we hit control V and go down here, it's not going to do exactly because as you see, they're not exactly lined up. But if we hit D, it will delete some of the .txts. Uh, it, it works better if they're all lined up. They're all exactly the same. So, so that is visual mode uh, in a nutshell. So the last one also has to do with, with visual mode, and there's four of them here. So if I, if you remember way back at the beginning of this video, which it seems like this video has gone on forever, which it has, we talked about how you could change things inside of other things. So we talked about how if you have parentheses and you had a whole bunch of stuff here, and then you did change inside parentheses, you can do that. But visual mode also has something similar. So let's just say you wanted to select the stuff inside the parentheses. So you could do VI parentheses and it would select everything inside the parentheses. It does the same thing with uh, parentheses. Was that where I calling those parentheses? I, I meant uh, quotes, quotation marks. Good Lord, Matt. Ugh, this video's gone on for too long. So 
change inside quotation marks, <laughs> all that kind of, and it works that way. It works with parentheses. It works with both kinds of brackets. It works with single quotes. You can just go through. So let's do a couple more examples. So let's say we have a bracket here and we got some stuff here. So if we do VI brackets, it will select everything inside the brackets. If we have parentheses here and we got stuff inside the parentheses, we do VI parentheses, it will select everything in the, inside the parentheses. We can also go through and select a whole paragraph by doing something similar to like this. So if we uh, go down here where we actually have some par a paragraph and we do VIP, and it'll actually it actually counts as all as a paragraph, but let's just say uh, we have, uh, let's see here, an actual paragraph with with a space in between. We go back up here and do VIP. It will select the whole paragraph. So, holy shit, snacks, people. That was one hell of a video. Uh, the unedited time of this video is over an hour. That is just... <laughs> blowing my mind i did not ex i wanted this to be under half an hour i don't know where it will be in terms of editing because there's a lot of stuff here that i can cut out but good lord uh, i shouldn't see when i was putting this stuff together when i was putting this stuff together i was shooting for a hundred tips and tricks i am so glad i stopped at 50 <laughs> i would have been here for days <laughs> wasting away out of thirst and everything so anyways that is it for this video. If you stuck it all the way through, first of all, you're a trooper because I pretty much didn't stick it all the way through. <laughs> I almost did and I almost stopped so many times. Uh, so thank you for, th for sticking all the way through. If you, if you did, hit the subscribe button because there's more of this over elongated nonsense on the channel that you can be happy with uh, if you have just hours and hours of free time. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Uh, make sure you check out the Debian long-term review that I just did. That was also a, a really long video, but not nearly as long as this one, it turns out. Uh, you can definitely do that. You can check that out on the page at youtube.com slash linuxcast. Uh, before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gen 2 is fun too. Marcus, Meglin, Sven, Jackson, Knife and Tool, Joshua, Lee, Mitchell, Arch Center, Merrick, Camp, Mr. Fox. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time. I need a vacation.